Hello boys and girls. In this video I'm going to pose a few mathematical and or coding questions. They are open for me so um, you can choose to tackle either of them and I'm happy if you write down some response in the comments. If the, your answers and your findings are good then um, as, as a return I will uh, make a video on a subject of your choice. Right, So that's the deal. Um, so this uh, problem came up for me about two months ago in real life or at least on Discord or in a video game. And it has to do with uh, direct graphs or voting assignments. And um, the, the harder questions or the questions I want to get at you can read here on the screen. But you don't have to read it now. I will. Um, explain what this is about uh, step by step now in the video and we're going to um, talk of a, uh, a few combinatorics uh, results that are uh, like common knowledge and I will show you some code and what I want. So the situation is that you have a bunch of people right so, um, for the moment uh, you don't have to look at anything here except for the fact that we have a set of names here so we have um, 11 people and the the situation the is uh, like these sort of problems are sometimes explained in terms of the secret center procedure right so if you don't know secret center this is if you have like quiz christmas or some event where people want to give uh, something to each other and what you do like let's say in a classroom or at work is you um, try to find for every person one other person and each person has to give that person some gift, right? And it's called Secret Center because you can do it in a way that uh, nobody knows who they got the gift from, or maybe, I mean, maybe you tell them in the end, um, the person, oh, this is a gift from me, or whatever. But the, the point is that you make this sort of randomized assignment, right? And everybody does not choose somebody to gift, but um, is assigned a uh, person to gift. Um, and I have written this, um, this script and we will see what it does in a second. Let me close this. Let me clear this. We have these 11 people and if I hit enter, if I run this Python script, then it will compute one assignment um, in the way that you just saw. Um, so here comes up this, this sort of assignment, the black arrows say basically Tommy uh, ought to give a gift to Ulysses. And Alyssa is ought to give a gift to Start, and Start is su supposed to give a gift to Dave, and so on and so forth. So you have these errors. Uh, the green errors are uh, reciprocal gifts, right? So Huber will give a gift to Panic, and Panic will gift, uh, give a gift to Huber. So that's nice. <laughs> and uh, you see, this is like a, so, some assignment where um, nobody uh, gives a gift to themselves. So this is one of the criteria. That should be satisfied by that because if you have secret center and there's one person left who has basically nobody to give a gift to and just have to you know press give a present to themselves that's not fun uh, this is the situation that we want to avoid so let me run that uh, two more times to see uh, how that looks like um, so here we got another assignment in this case uh, hoop and Vesa uh, gift each other and everybody else um, somebody else and so you see there's some some loops there's two loops in this case um, let's do it one more time right so this is you can disentangle that if you will uh, this is just the cheapest way to plot it but the, here is a loop for three people huber gives to mr tex mr tex gives a panic um, and then there is a bigger loop which goes like so like the the graph is not so nice because it's like drawn in on an overlapping way. But what you see here, there's two people who gift each other and then there's two loops. Okay, let do it, let's do it one more time. Um, here you have one large loop and again, two people who do it to each other. Okay, and so about this video and the question and the tasks are really about is a situation where uh, not only one um, gift is given, but where, where there are some richer people you know for example you might have the situation where tommy says you know i uh, have enough money to give free gifts and i also want to receive free gifts in return right so the 
outgoing degree of this um, of this person as a vertex would be free, and the ingoing would also be free. And um, it's uh, not hard to believe that this assignment is possible. And the, what the algorithm that I have there and that we are going to discuss in a second really does is finding such an assignment where everybody um, gives and receives exactly as much as they specified that they have capacity to give. Okay, so this um, problems uh, of finding the assignment is also related to what's called a derangement. I think I have the Wikipedia page here uh, open. So a derangement is, as you can hear, read on the Wikipedia page, a permutation um, such that there are no uh, fixed points. So here we have an example. If you look at uh, the sequence of letters A, B, C, D, this would be like the, the uh, 11 people, in this case four people, and you can permute them, all permutations are drawn here. And then there are some permutations where nobody or no letter is in the same spot as it was before. For example, uh, if you go from A, B, C, D to B, A, D, C, then everybody really, uh, like all the letters changed actually pos position. Whereas here you have also permutation, but uh, C and D would stay the same. They are fixed point. And so this is not a derangement, right? This is the situation that we just had here with the with this. So this is also a derangement. You can also understand this is 11 people standing in a room and everybody must move, go somewhere and uh, go to another spot, but nobody should like stay at the same place, right? Nobody should give themselves or everybody ought to move. Um, so we have this fixed point condition, which makes it a little bit um, uh, trickier to, to find a solution. So hypothetically, for example, let, let's say you play Secret Center with three people, just putting the names of the three people in a jar and letting them draw is um, not the, the best solution to the problem um, because uh, if you have three people and two people are assigned to gift each other, then the third uh, person stands alone, right? So you see this is not completely trivial. Um, you want to rule out these situations. And this is also what we're fighting against when we're doing this programming. Okay, um, and so in the code, um, if I like, I have here this this um, this comment where I forced to the in and out degree to be one. If I comment this out, which is the algorithm that I, that I actually have, and run it again, then what it will do is it will then find an assignment according to these capacities here, right? So Hero indeed he can just give one gift and he can, will also receive one gift. But for example, uh, Mr. Tex can give free gifts and receive free gifts, right? You can also understand this is voting. And this was the situation that came up in the video game. Okay, so I will clear this. If I run this again, then what it will compute is an assignment which is more complicated. So we said that uh, Hero would uh, give and receive free gifts, right? So we see the assignment and we got is that Hero, uh, wait a minute, no, Hero had one, sorry, and Mr. Tex was the person with free. So Mr. Tex is given the assignment to give to Huber, Panic, and uh, Van Dango. And then there are some other people like um, Panic, for example, who is also giving to Mr. Te Mr. Tex, right? So Mr. Tex is actually giving to Panic and Panic is giving back to Mr. Tex, but then uh, Ulysses is also giving to Mr. Tex, um, but Mr. Tex does not necessarily uh, to have, have to give back. It doesn't have to be reciprocal, but the in and out degree of gifts should uh, be correct according to the assignment that we specified in this list. So again, Mr. Tex had degree of three. So ha let's have a look who, where you see here. Okay. So as I said, Mr. Tex and Panic exchange gifts. This is this green line. And he also exchanges back and forth gifts with Fandango. And then so there's one more gift that he must give and also will receive. So we see he gives to Huba. This is this black line which points at Huba. And he receives from Ulysses, as we already said, right? So this is an assignment which exactly uh, fits this um, specification what that we have here, right? And I can also change that, right? I can say, I want actually Mr. Tex not to do three, but eight, right? He has the capacity to now to give eight people and will receive eight. And then it computes and it will find one. And then we have uh, and this new solution where you see 
Mr. Tex has, uh, wow, he has seven reciprocal gift givings with a bunch of people. And also he gives to Stud, where Stud gives to Ulysses and then there's some loops again. So this is a much more complicated situation. Again, it's similar to the derangement, except that we're not just going to one other place. We're not giving to one other person, but we have like capacities in all directions, right? And so the challenge was, um, okay, given this, this list where I just know the vertex degrees, how to get this, okay. Um, I will uh, go through the code in a second, at least the, the more interesting parts. And this code is not efficient at all. And the question here is, uh, like how to make a more efficient code, right? And essentially I'm doing random sampling and, and if not all conditions are fulfilled, um, I'm uh, deleting the, the sample and, and sample anew. Um, this is one thing. And what the code can also do is it maximizes the number of reciprocal gifts. So, you know, um, I thought it would be nice, like from a log logistic perspective, but also, um, also from a um, niceness perspective, that it, there is a, a lot of reciprocal um, gifts or votes. So in this case, uh, the green arrows, right? And so what you can do actually with the algorithm, you can specify um, how, like, what a minimum amount of reciprocal votes is. So let me again um, choose um, smaller. Um, gifts so that we will we are more likely to get smaller uh, votes um, reciprocals so uh, you know I, I lowered the number of uh, capacities now um, I run the thing again and we got we get this graph and you can see there are a few reciprocals which are basically randomly came up but not so many um, what I can do is I um, specify here, I will explain this in a second, that I want, like, let's say, at least 60% um, back and forths. And if I run this then again, then it will try longer, harder, and give me one which has have more reciprocals, right? So here, um, I think I, I log it. Th this has... Um, 64% reciprocals. I mean, you know, the green ones are always back and forth. So this actually count as two. And um, the, the, the amount of black ones went down. It can be harder. Let's say we want 80%. So it will even get even greener. But it also takes longer because I'm having this very inefficient code, right? So here now we are left with one, two, three, four, five um, black ones. But um have one two three four five six in, i don't know times two uh, so a bunch of those okay for, um it looks like for this uh, small number of um capacities here is actually quick so i can go higher let's say i go to 95 i mean you probably hear my laptop in the background so now he's just m number crunching he's like Basically, my algorithm, as you will see, is just randomly generating proposals. And once they uh, fulfill this, then um, this is accepted. Okay, we're already at, we already found a sample with 88%, but this is not yet accepted. Yeah, and you see the problem. Uh, I have not really, uh, again, to be honest, I didn't try too hard because this solution already uh, functioned and the reciprocal aspect was just you know a bonus it was not necessary so um i i i, I did, didn't play around with it too much but i thought that makes sense as, like you know as a challenge because i'm sure there is some uh, smart way to do this where um you um chop up the problem and thereby uh find a solution quickly but not any solution but also one where this reciprocal aspect is higher so you see it doesn't even it doesn't even finish it let's uh, quit this and let's go again with 85 so that we at least see one more graph so here like already on the on the on the 12th sample and it's not it's not just a sample as you will see I, i'm putting already a few a little bit of a smarts into the algorithm it's not just random sampling it's already taking care of not not doing self votes and so on and so forth um 
Okay, but okay, as you can see, it doesn't really, like if I would wait, ah, oh, now no, it's done, yeah. So now he, you see he reduced it to just three black uh, ones. So there's a small circle where they, they're voting, voting in a circle and everybody else is uh, Ritzy Poker. Um, one question I have not written down, but it would also be interesting to see what are the situations where it's maybe not even possible to have all reciprocals. For example, clearly in the situation with three people, you cannot um, have everybody uh, be reciprocal because uh, everybody can only, like in, free, in the three people situation, everybody can only give one vote and then you can basically only do a circle to fulfill it in, at all and this is a situation where there's no reciprocals. So you see, it's not always possible to have this, this back, and back and forth. So these are loops of, uh, these are cycles of, um, of length two. And so there's a bunch of combinatorical questions with, which came up. Um, okay, so you have seen how this works. I usually, like I have used this uh, in uh, the last days um, quite a bit um, often. And I usually now, uh, because my numbers are actually much higher than this, right? So what I actually do now is I, I only give this uh, the reciprocal aspect to like 40 or 50 because otherwise I'm just sitting there and it takes so long, right? So just for fun, I run it once again with uh, Vesa having 10. And you see here the situation, Vesa has <laughs> only reciprocals. You uh, basically does back and forth with everybody, but the, everybody else only has like one, two, three votes and so on and so forth. Okay, so you, you see how that works. Now, uh, here are my questions. So this is, I call this Copio Santa. Uh, maybe uh, it has been uh, studied properly and has another name, I don't know, but this is sort of a voting thing. We are searching for a, a D graph, meaning a direct graph. Um, and I, wait a second, I have to plug in power. Okay, <laughs> uh, I will make this quick. Um, we have a D graph, meaning a graph where with the errors have directions, right? There's a person you vote for, it's not like an under graph. Um, it is a balance in a sense that in and outgoing degree of every vertex is the same for each vertex. Like not all vertices have to have the same degree, but each vertex has the same in and outgoing flow of gifts or votes. And there are uh, no self loops as well. So nobody is voting for themselves. And also nobody is voting uh, for one person twice. Nobody's gifting uh, one person two gifts, right? Uh, I didn't say that up to now, but this was clear from the images as well. So these are the, the constraints. Um, and the, uh, the question is how many of, like if you specify the outgoing degree, right? If, you, if I give you a list of this sort, which is a function from the names to some uh, integer, where the integer are some number smaller than the number of names, then given this function, which assigns degrees, how many um, graphs are there at all? Um, and this number, if you know the number, how many graphs there, there, there are, this would also give you your expectation of how long you would actually have to sample, right? So if only 5% um, of all D graphs um, that are, uh, you know, whatever reference uh, class you take, if you have uh, simple D graphs, um, but allow for um, self loops, something like that, um, then if you know how many d graphs there are and then if you know how many uh, d graphs without self loops there are then you can divide these two numbers and then you say oh right so it's uh, if i uh, sample thousand graphs then uh, only you know i don't know 50 of them will uh, have all the property and are a valid um, situation and this gives you an estimate if you do this bad random sampling approach to generating then how long you have to wait how many you have to uh, generate Okay, and I can tell you that, um, I mean, you can look up for the derangement. Again, this is the situation where the in and outgoing degree is only one. Uh, there is some nice formula, namely, um, give me this formula here. So 
The derangement is also denoted with exclamation mark N. You have N people, um, they all have to move or give one person. They only have capacity of giving one gift. Then you can have this nice simple formula, um, how many there are. Basically, N uh, faculty is the number of, of all uh, permutation. And if you then exclude this self-gifting uh, possibility, if you exclude uh, fixed point, then you must multiply with this factor. And uh, for example, here, I actually write it down that um, if you have this 11 people, 11 names, then there's already uh, 14 million derangements, right? And uh, what we are searching for is the same as this, fu this uh, formula, but uh, the degree is not fixed to one, but the degree is, is basically any integer for any vertex. So it will be a, a direct generalization of this formula. And I'm pretty sure it, there, there must be some nice formula for this. Um, um, and what I can tell you is there are, and you can uh, Google it or look on Stack Exchange, there are two to the power of n squared d graphs in general. And if you cut out the self loops, then you're left with um, 2 to the power of n squared minus n. There is uh, n faculty permutations and I just showed you there is this factor that you can uh, divide out and then you get the number of derangements but we are searching for this situation um, with higher outgoing degree. Okay and then making it even harder um, and it, that might be uh, then uh, more tricky is counting um, how many such degrees are there where we fix the number of reciprocities of gifts or in, uh, in other words, the cycles, you know, the back and forth cycles of length two. Um, if you view this as a sort of generalized permutation, then there's this back and forths are like, like cycles of the permutation of length two. And if, if you fix that in particular for the two cycles, how many are there then, right? If you, if you random sample, uh, a general um, degraph, possibly even with loops, and we, we don't allow ones with loops and we uh, demand a certain number of two cycles. Uh, how many do we have to sample to get one? Okay, so these are the, the questions and I'm uh, very interested in your responses. Uh, to quickly, right, I'm running out of battery here, but 7%, um, okay. To uh, quickly show you the code, I mean, it's also linked in the, uh, as always in the gist in, uh, in the bottom, but I have this specification, I can fix it. This is called uh, degrees. I compute how many um, uh, names are there, how many uh, vertices have there to be or edges, and then some auxiliary uh, logs. There is a nice function. You can steal this from me. This is like given the number of edges where the edges is are just pairs, right? There's the, the source name and the target name, and you have, um, I don't know, 40 of them to, to draw. You pass it this and I have this, um, this network X Python um, library function. And here you see how you draw this graph and make the colors and whatnot. Okay, that looks like that. And I have the log where you have this, uh, these sorts of assignments. Okay, not so interesting. I have a quick function where it counts how many green errors are there basically or green errors times two just you take it at the pair flip the pair and see if both uh, the back and the fourth are in the edges and then the main routine is here so this is just for logging um, what I do is I I run this uh, this routine so I take this the source elements I uh, which are Okay, I take uh, I th take all the names for every uh, capacity of a, of a name. For example, if Mr. Tags has three uh, gifts to give, if it has a capacity for three, then I say Mr. Tags, Mr. Tags, Mr. Tags. I, I, I tripled it, and then the next step, next person, like Vesa, let's say Vesa has two gifts to give, then I append um, two times Vesa, so we get a sequence of uh, names for for every edge that will uh, appear. So if there are like 11 people, then there will be, let's say it comes down to uh, having to draw 40 edges. And then we have a list where there's just names with the duplicates of how many they are. 
and then the the trivial uh, like approach to finding a solution would be then to take this list make a copy of the list shuffle the list right so you have this list and then you have another list which is exactly as long but the elements are just shuffled and then you do a pairwise assignment like everybody to their shuffled self and then you look at it and see does it have all the conditions you want is there no self vote um and um yeah this is like the, the main main criteria then you can also count are there enough uh, reciprocals and so on and so forth uh, if you do that that's not uh, very efficient because um, then you sample everything and then just cut away so what i have here is an alternative um, i do uh, take the sources and shuffle it because the shuffling improves the, the speed up a little bit because the problem is if you do this um, if you just do the naive approach and you, you say oh for, for the first person i assign this for the second person i assign this the problem is that in your list like let's say huba which is one of the names is at the end and he has like five gifts to give if you don't um take care of this high capacity persons early on then you end up with a list of five people who are can do a lot of votes and then you do have to do a lot of self votes okay i'm running out of battery but what what you see here is that what i choose to do is i make an, an ex exclusion list right on for example the enforcing the no self vote i shuffle the source list and then i also randomly pick from all the po legal candidates and um i do this a bunch of times and find one where everything works out as i said and then i have my edges and then yeah i'm pre pretty much done i lock the result and lock the graphs graphs i'm pretty sure there is some smarter way to i assume it will consist of tackling the high capacity people first and reducing the high like the problem and with a lot of people to to a, a situation where, where there are people with can just give a little or something like that and then you get down to the more approachable situations i did not find a good solution i asked around a little bit um so but in any case that's uh, the problem um and if you get, have any input also on the theorems or a coding side post